You're watching Chaotic TV. Hi guys, welcome back to Chaotic TV. In the top left on Ohana, we have the Green Protoss playing for Team Caron 3 Esports Club. He is Vipro. And his opponent tonight for this first game will be the player from Millennium. It is Feast playing as the Red Protoss. Alright guys, just a little clarification. I know you see this new sexy out overlay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, during this PvP, and actually the following games, you're going to be seeing some Caron 3 Esports players. Caron 3 Esports no longer exists, but we will still be casting these games because uh, essentially they're going to be good games. There are good players on Caron 3 Esports, it just meant that uh, they were a club, not an actual team per se, uh, and the players formerly of Caron 3 Esports have now found new homes. This player, Vipro, currently plays for Complexity. Lucifron and Vortex both went to Mouse Sports. And now we're just going to have fun watching this PvP and this new sexy overlay we see him. Yeah. It's, sorry, get, sorry for the silence. This is really nothing to talk about in a PvP until after the first Cybernetic score goes down. Uh, as if there ever was a second one. They're doing exactly the same things. Yeah, I mean, there's no I, real difference unless there's a proxy coming out until you see the cybernetic score, and then they can either go for the mothership core or not, and then go for the first nexus or not, depending on how, what order they do things in, kind of lets you know a little bit. And only super pros can read that off of just looking at another person's build. Uh, in-game at least. Observers, as we can see everything, basically will tell you what's happening as best we can. Oh, we have a double gas for identical. both of them. It's like yeah. one person is playing both. <laughs> they, uh, if you look at the times in the top left, the only thing different are the probes and the zealots. And one of them, the probe is catching up because it was chrono boosted. But both of them going double gas means that they're probably going to be teching a little bit quicker and not going for the really fast Nexus. Ooh, we actually have a Mothership Core coming down out of Feast. And Vipro is the first one. Vipro? Vipro? The Green Protoss is the first one to turn on his Warp Gate technology, although quickly followed by Feasts. And it's Sentry yeah, first coming out. He delayed his warp gate just a, just a tiny bit to get that that mothership core right away, which is good. You can get it across the map and take a look at your opponent's base. Uh, maybe poke at them if their stalker's not in the position, kind of thing. A mothership core will take out a Sentry, so this first zealot will probably get through eventually if that mothership core does take out the Sentry. We do have a faster Nexus coming down from Bipro, and that might actually be canceled if unlucky enough, but now we have a mothership core of Vipro going to be able to take out that Zealot and the Sentry will do what it can, but it's being followed by a Stalker, so now the mothership core of Feast will not do as much damage as previously intended. And the Zealot doesn't look like it's actually going to turn on some pressure. Ah, just found the first problem with this new overlay. There's not enough, enough vision on the left, so the mothership core is only one little fraction of the screen yeah. Oh, we do have a little bit of pressure coming okay, in. Okay, it's probably going to over there. Yeah. Well, is that next going to be cancelled? I sure hope not. Now the Mothership Core is attacking in the back. This is just a little bit of pressure so that the Mothership Core can have a shot at taking oh, out some of those probes. Sentry. Lost a sentry, though. That's not as great. And uh, Stalkers don't have enough firepower to take out that uh, Nexus. But they can be super annoying while this Mothership Core has four kills so far and does a recall without the stalkers to go back home. Robotics facility done by all of this and a Stargate coming out from Feast. Looking at their gateway counts, looks like Feast has one more gateway and uh, I don't think... yeah, he's also going for Forge behind this. Both players getting a Nexus. Feast is almost done, but not quite. And the pro production has already begun on Vipro's. I'm definitely going to have to tweak this overlay, make everything a little bit smaller and more in tune with like the game heart setup 
that uh, we saw used so sexfully today at DreamHack. So right away, as soon as the forge finishes for Feast, we see plus one attack coming out. So this isn't going to be the Sky Toss build, otherwise that would be shields. Yep, if he were going for Sky Toss, he'd probably be doing shields, and uh, what he would be going with would not necessarily be an Oracle. He might be going for a high Phoenix count early on, and then move into Void Rays. But since he's going Oracle, and there's only a couple of Stalkers here, and the uh, Robotics Facility has been spotted, his Oracle might be able to do a decent amount of damage before being pushed away. Hallucinated Phoenix just Also following it up. Following it up right away with uh, Twilight Console, so <coughs> we'll see if he wants to go into the uh, the Zillidar Archon type composition or just Link. And there's the Oracle shooting more probes. The Oracle will lose uh, its life, but something is going on on my computer. I keep hearing a beeping noise. Not like a, a menacing beeping noise, more like a wing, which means something's happening, but I don't exactly know what. It is quite annoying though. And it slows down my computer every time it happens, so. So you see Feast is about three ahead in worker count here, just between his harass and, well, even with having his nexus slower, having killing off some probes has got him ahead. Yeah, sorry for the the silence. I was trying to figure out what that sound was. We do we have the robotics facility, but nothing's been produced from it for any amount of time now. We don't have a single uh, observer or immortal, and the push that Feast seems to be building up to might actually do some damage if more units don't actually come in from Vipro. He's building a couple more gates. He's going well, to go to five observer, total. But... Really? Where's I the don't observer? Know what's doing? Sitting out in front of his natural, over the little island of rocks. No, oh, so it is. Or a pylon coming down. That's he's definitely down. planning on doing some pressure, but yeah, it's gonna be a a little blink attack from him. As soon as the blink finishes, he's gonna try to poke in and do some damage. I don't and. Uh, Vipro doesn't see it coming at all. Otherwise, he would have immortals be making. Looks like Jethro is a little bit behind in anything on um, spending on technology and economy, except for the army is where he's about 400 supply ahead, or not supply spending ahead, which is kind of 400 interesting. 400 supply ahead. <laughs> shh, shh. Impressive. He's supply block though. That's probably a, a big problem for him. Probably. I, I say that knowing it's a big problem for him. Um, <laughs> and Feast is going to use his forward pile to. to make up for that spending difference, although he is just going to blink into the main with the vision from that mothership core. Everything's already up there waiting for him. Nice force fields, and a recall because the blink did nothing. Both players taking a third base, and it looks like we're just going to go up into a huge macro game, and very likely, and possible, that around 20 minutes they'll both be maxed and finally push out and attack, and we'll, this game will be decided by the one massive attack that happens. Yeah, Vipro is doing the Zealot Archon build with charge. Uh, he's just finishing out his Twilight tech on his Twilight Council by getting his charge, so he has charge and blink. Uh, we'll likely see them both uh, wander into Colossus tech at some point because you can't have endgame PvP without a bunch of Colossus. The third Nexus for Feast is up much quicker than Vipro. At least his mineral line is uh, pre saturated and now the oversaturation of Vipro as you can see all the probes moving across the map will take place at the bottom both players keeping very good track of their probe count and now there's an observer moving towards the check to third for for feast at Vipro's third being chased by the own feast is going to have a good feast is going to have a good timing attack here he's going to finish plus 3 weapons uh just after Vipro's plus two weapons finishes, so he'll be able to come in and that's pretty strong timing attack if he wants. We do see Vipro posturing, uh, trying to sweep up for pilots, and he's gonna find the one right here. Yeah, 
Well, that's Splat Harry's putting it. down some, uh, pylons right ne semi next to each other on the right side of the map. And we do have a uh, War Prism coming out for Beast. That might be a relatively interesting tactic, depending on what he's going to do with it. Uh, he does. I thought he was going to pick up that Immortal and run with it, but nobody does Immortal drops anymore, I don't think. Four Pylons still not being Ooh. scouted by that Archon. But the Just shuttle will be seen. Just missed that War Prism. Really? Level Zelt might have seen it. The Pylon saw it but he didn't pay attention enough to it. So he's probably going to have his third warped in with a little bit while he's doing a bit of pressure, uh, a lot of pressure, I should say. Well, that going to tr try to hit a plus two timing, but he's going to be met by, well, not quite size Storm, but plus three timing from the other player. Not really timing, but defense. He's attacking just before his plus two actually kicks in, and all of his zealots are dying beforehand. The time warps are doing a great job, and you can just look at the supply, though. Uh, looks like Vipro is actually doing a lot more damage with these Immortals than the Immortal Archons of Feast, and looks like Feast is on the bit of a back foot. Some Zealots going in to take the fire from that Archon, that Immortal, and the Immortal of Feast is being targeted by the Immortals of Vipro. The bank of Vipro is quite high right now, and the Warped-In Zealots probably will be able to push this out, but I think enough damage has been done to the army that, oh, even more reinforcing Zealots going to be able to continue the pressure here. Photon overcharge of that Nexus has gotten at four kills and is continuing to do damage to those zealots. The Immortals still untouched are moving forward to take out the Immortal of Feast and now they have to pull back because uh, probably waiting for more reinforcements of their own. A couple of Archons are about to morph here in the middle of uh, the front of the Natural of Feast. And I was going to get that sentence out eventually, but the Natural Mineral Line of Feast is quite undersaturated as is the main. So I think a little bit of damage at 15 workers killed on both sides. Was there a warp in? Oh, it looks like Zealots attacked Vipro's third during that whole attack. And now some photon cannons have come out to save it. But whatever probe put down a Nexus at that fourth base saw a forward pylon but didn't do anything about it. Now we're going to have continued pressure at Beast's third. More Zealots running forward, but they're still down on the upgrade, which, it, which kept... Feast from being taken out early. If he had only been on two along with um, Vipros to attack, he would have been able to probably run Feast over just just enough that Feast wouldn't have been able to come back. On this Nexus, it looks like. Well, for try to, anyways. That looks like come he's going to get cleaned it. up, but a lot of health was indeed taken off that Nexus. Four pylons being cleaned up for Feast right now, and Feast is going to be the one cleaning up four pylons in front of his own main. The fourth base for Vipro, yeah, when it finishes, is going to be quite damaging. He's already got a 50 supply lead. And we just saw there just a slightly better unit composition coming out of Vipro. Uh, Feast had superior upgrades and the defender's advantage with Photon Overcharge, but it looks like that can be overcome with a slightly better unit composition. Looks like that Warp Prism was going to try to warp in again, but the Archon saw it, and a fourth base goes down for Feast. Uh, and a, another Warp Prism coming out for Feast. Probably going to go to that left side. Plus three, four, Vipro is about to finish. And the arm, first armor is going two-thirds towards finishing for Feast. So he's going to be on a little bit of an upgrade lead, and a Robotics Bay switch looks like he's going to be going into some Colossi. He does have Storm, but he hasn't used it, to my knowledge. Yeah. Both players so Vipro's going to have an opportunity here until the Colossus Comp gets up a bit. He is extremely ahead in supply. Yeah, if he doesn't take advantage of his supply lead right now and the bank that he's building behind all of this, then he might be giving uh, Feast a bit of a chance to get further and further ahead. He's already got the plus one armor, and now the plus three is finished for Vipro, and he needs to move out, and looks like he's going to do just that. While a shuttle filled with two Templar, he's going to do a mineral line um, attack with these Templar, and Zealots are being warped into Vipro's third base. Two, two cannons there, but he's already queued up attacks on all of those probes, and it looks like Vipro is going to move in and take out this brand Ooh, new fourth big storm beast. drop at the Natro. Oh my god, that's Don't tremendous. Don't that to a cannon. And the fourth of We see Beast both is players attacking all over the place. Another attack going on at the fourth. 
That is I a gigantic Zeladar Khan army. I want to click on those Templar and see how much damage they did. Still 50 supply up for, for Vipro, and it uh, looks like the warp in for Feast at Vipro's fourth didn't do much this next time, but if you look at the work account killed, Feast has killed 34 of Vipro's uh, workers to, to the 21 of Vipro against Feast. Now we have a huge attack coming in. Great concave by Vipro on Feast. The Colossus in the back doing some decent damage to those Zealots, but the Zealots of Feast can't get into the battle as quick as possible. The Archons are have melted all of the remaining Zealots, and now this third is gone, and the probes are dying by accident from the Archon fire. The Colossi will fall eventually. It's running up that cliff, but not quick enough. And there's the GG from Millennium's Feast. Ten Archons there just kind of destroyed everything. Oh, ten on one of them. Yeah, I've probably got a whole batch of Zealots. But that was game one, guys, between uh, the former Caron 3 Esports Club and Millennium. Vipro taking the lead 1-0 for Caron 3. And we'll be moving into game two in just a second. For Chaotic TV, I'm Kale. And this is Glyphs. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.